Dear curious listeners, we assume you're eager to be exposed to new sound experiences and uh, that's what you expect from Gaudi Amos and we're, we're ready to deliver. This is Jonas Biskert. Uh, you probably saw me on the presentation of this series. If you didn't, please search back on our website last December during the festival. We explain why this series at all, a uh, podcast made like a work of art, like a composition by experienced musicians in certain fields. And we presented three of them back then. And now we're in March 2021, in the middle of a musical and a very cold season. And we thought we'd just go on and present a couple more. There's a few podcasts coming regularly in the next month. And we have the huge honor of presenting the first artist, composer, guitarist, musicologist, you name it, that made, created a special podcast for us. And he's presenting it to us today. Art Strootman, welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Thanks for your introduction. Thanks so much for being there. And it's an honor for us to present uh, your work again at Gaudi Amus, right? Because you have a long history with Gaudi Yeah, Yeah, ever since the... Ever since the edition of 2017, I'm a, I'm, I'm a regular guest. <laughs> when you won the award? That was the 17, yes. Yeah. Not long after then the Annelie de, de Man uh, award? That was one year later. Um, and yeah, and in, it's funny that in 2019 was the Matthijs Vermeulen. And in 2020 was the Buma Award, the only award I truly did not have to do anything for. <laughs> um, and in the midst of the of the pandemic, so it's a it's a nice streak. I'm very I'm very honored. Last year we presented your documentary on the wall. Last September, right? That was last September. Yeah. And now your podcast. Yeah, it's my first ever podcast. I never made one before. How is it different than composing? Um. I think it's more of a, a curational practice, less than than a, than a truly creative one. Um, and I have been I have been on podcasts before, but then somebody else were, was making them, so it was it felt more like an interview that was cut and paste and molded into into the final shape. And um, well, it's 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 nice to to also curate the music you 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 yourself get enthusiastic for and sort of uh, try to make a context around that. It's nice. Because it's a very personal story. Again, secretly, I listened to your podcast. I couldn't resist waiting for the moment of publication. And then I discovered you share a very intimate moment of discoveries of, of musical and listening experiences that change your perception of music. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a personal document. And um, when, when I, I said sort of curated the, the fragments I, I wanted to include, it also really felt like, oh, yeah, this, this, could, be, this could be my my mp3 player on shuffle because there is a lot in there that i that i really get enthusiastic for and even though the the examples are incredible varied um there is something that ties them all together and i decided to make that sort of the theme for yes, for the podcast yeah. itself a narrative to it we forgot to mention again for new listeners that the the name of this series of podcasts it's curious ears and art can illustrate that immensely because he's been curious a very curious listener for all his life and that's what he shares with us but we didn't mention the title of your podcast uh, art yeah we we coined it uh, hidden pulse um i wanted to talk about rhythm in the in the broadest sense and there is something that ties together um african music minimalist music um complex metal music and uh, sophisticated jazz music in, in a way that they all deal with a, with a very specific use of, of rhythm. Um, and that's, that's what I tried to sort of curate and, 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 and place together in this podcast. And we coined it Hidden Pulse um, Resulting Patterns. Well, there's a lot going on in there, which is very technical. And I think what is, what is mostly in there is that on the one side, you can approach it very technically and see it as something very complex, as something that you have to wrap your head around. Or you can leave that complete aside and just enjoy the music as is. And um, that's a feature of all the excerpts that I chose that I think uh, sort of ties them all together. Starting in Cameroon, moving uh, to different parts of the world from jazz pianist in Switzerland to heavy metal in Sweden and further beyond. There's very specific examples, but there's something universal about all of them. Something technical, but also intuitive to it, we could say. Yeah, yeah. I think I think indeed the intuitive part is either when it comes to to um, 
metal bands from Sweden that you can bang your head on it, even though there is a lot going on underneath it. Um, or you can tap your feet uh, whilst, in, whilst you're actually in the midst of, of a multitude of, uh, of rhythms and grooves and, and patterns um, that in the end sort of contributes or sums up to a very complex network. But in the end, it's very, very approachable because you can also just sit and, and nod your head. And I like that in concerts. I've been to many concerts where you, where, you, where you listen to groove music and then you see an audience nodding their heads in like different, in different tempos almost. And they're all right. They're all, they're, there's no wrong or right there. They just, they just feel it in a certain way. And this multitude of rhythmical feelings, I, I, I dig a lot. And that's, uh, that's, I think, indeed what's in there. This sort of intuitive way that you, that you can't sit still and you start moving in your way and how, uh, how you perceive this music. And if you look into, into it carefully, then you see that, that it's indeed all in there. And if you have to sort of untangle it all, uh, there's, there's even more to enjoy, which is great. Shall we listen to a couple of excerpts of your podcast to make the listeners curious? Sure. The very beginning. These are hands on water. You tell us. That's right. Yeah. So this is um, this is the Baka, the Baka tribe in Africa, uh, partly in Cameroon, partly in the uh, Central African Republic, um, and and indeed one of the. One of the music makings that they have, that one of the ways that they that they make music is that they that they slap the music with flat hands, and on the velocity and how deep they they move their hand into the water, they don't only create rhythms but also pitch, and in the collective effort of of multiple uh, musicians doing that, um, there is this there is this beautiful uh, texture created. So hidden pulse, hearing to, could you repeat the title of your podcast? Yeah, so so hidden pulse. Um, yeah, listening to to sort of the hidden hearing grooves or yeah, the, the subtitle. Like, yeah, exactly. Hearing unplayed grooves because yeah. the, the resulting groove is a, is the summary of the, the the addition of all the grooves that each hand plays, right? In this case, exactly. And it's um, I, there there is a the, um, an ethnomusicologist I cite uh, with the name Cubic, who, who, who actually in a very early state, right in the beginning of the sixties sees this that he was he was watching these african musicians and he thought okay i hear this rhythm but nobody is playing it um which is a fantastic thing of course there's something very obscure about that you, that you look to music but it doesn't correspond with what you're actually hearing and um, yeah, there's something magical in that that is uh, that's not only in african music to be found but also in, in some of the other excerpts for example So kind to guide us through the rhythm. <laughs> this is where you could headbang in different directions, right? Definitely, yeah. There's a nice sort of ongoing rhythmic pulse being played on a quartalis, a very, very sort of a lonely type of rhythm. And you hear that at the beginning of the piece, and if you just nod your head there, you're all of a sudden surprised that apparently all the musicians on stage felt it in a completely different tempo. And um, yeah, I'm I'm unfolding some of these in the uh, in the podcast. Now, nah, how about the next example? I might found it somewhere here. Going on, that has a beauty of itself. And if you just think about switching off all the distortion pedals and and removing the screaming voice and and the, the complex drum patterns, what actually remains are again beautiful patterns against a grid that can be listened to or forgotten about. So you listen to this ever since you can remember. Yeah, there's. I think when you're trained as a guitarist, I started. I think when I was nine years old with a classical guitar, and you play the repertoire written for that instrument, and which is very much circling around, let's say, the Romantic repertoire written for the Spanish guitar, mostly also by Spanish composers. And then you enter your puberty, and you see that there is this world of the electric guitar sort of alongside it. Um, 
which of course starts in, in uh, or becomes very vivid in, um, in the pop and rock music. And since you're so trained to, to get the most out of this instrument sound-wise and rhythm-wise, and then you see these virtuosos on electric guitars and, uh, and very often in metal music, that, that is quite outrageous what they can do in this instrument. So it started off with a virtuosity and just playing fast, which is something very uh, enticing when you're 15 or 16. And part of that stayed with me. And, and I think it's not so much the virtuosity of the guitars that stayed with me, but the virtuosity that they that I put in this music that's to that that's mostly enjoyed by like stadiums full of, of people just banging their head on two and four. But what there is meanwhile going on structurally in this music is uh, is amazing, I think. And this band's called Mishuga, and they they explored they explore this uh, in depth, and almost all of their pieces have something in there which is. Uh, yeah, which is actually in itself also a beautiful compositional sort of structure that if you write it out in notes will will actually, I think, surprise many how, um, how beautifully it's created. And then when you just put all the sheet music aside and visit a concert, you see you see men standing on the stage doing doing all these rhythmical or playing all this rhythmical complexity whilst headbanging and uh, getting a complete crowd joining them in that. You mentioned when you listen to, to such a resulting pattern or, or a complex structure, you might not understand it, you might not follow it consciously at first, but you're still engaged with the listening. There's some degree of attraction to the texture that you can't really tell how it's made that still calls your attention, draws your attention deeply into the matter. Does that sometimes not happen at first listening? and you need to be exposed for a longer time or have you have the, the, the opposite experience as well? Well, I think as, as this podcast series is also called, it, it, it all comes down to, to curiosity. And um, I think these, these sort of enticing rhythms make you move or make you think about what, what there is and, and you can dig deeper and find all this complexity. And there's of course, there's a lot of music that, that starts with it. Like, okay, but what exactly is going on here? What is it that it's, that, that, that contributes to the language that the musical language that's being spoken or uh, to the textures that I'm listening to. And yeah, I think this is something that, that is so beautiful about all this music that, that, you can, that you can go along these lines of curiosity, that you can feed yourself in your own curiosity and think like, okay, I wanna know more about this. And you start to explore various other pieces that were made by, by, by these groups. Um, or you can, yeah, you can be along the way, you can be in a train on a bicycle walking home and have this on your headphones and actually not at all mull too much over the complexity of it all. And of course, there's, there's a lot to say for both of them, but um, I think there's, there's something that I enjoy in groove, just, just the fact, I think it's such a universal thing that you can listen to grooves and it, it moves you in a way. It can be very, very literal that, it, that you can't sit still or it moves you because you you feel some sort of a connection in a more brainy, brainy way. And I both really like, but there's, that is, I think, something specific to groove. Yeah, you use the word um, rewarding often in your podcast. And I was curious because that rewarding experience, as I heard it, it had to do with this tension with how much are you kept in orientation do you recognize some kind, some kind of groove, even if you can put, can't pinpoint exactly what? And disorientation. So this, this delicate equilibrium balance between recognizing some material and not the rest. So there's still room for discovery. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's, it's, it's very well put. And I think there is also, um, there's something beautiful, and that's, I think, the rewarding of all, the, the rewarding part of all, these ex, of all these excerpts is that even if you, if you nod your head wrong, you're still right. I mean, there is no, it, when it comes about, when it comes to understanding something or not, we, we, we very clearly, and that's also just the Western activity, think about like, okay, I'm gonna write this out and I'm just gonna mull over just as long as it can think exactly in the way of the, as the composer intended it, or as the musician are thinking it. And there is something worthwhile to that, but it, you can also actually leave it just there and, and indeed listen to it in the way you want not your head in the way you want. And there's actually nothing too wrong about that at all. It's just a different right, I would say. And that is, that is something I think just very cool about all of this. That's fantastic. So I think indeed we should leave it there and challenge our listeners to be exposed to your listening experience and see how much they can grasp 
and they can share and they may like or dislike and it's up to them to to do this trajectory of discovery that you propose yeah it's a, it's a beautiful time i mean with all the excerpts you can you can just click youtube spotify and there will be related links and related music and i hope i can um, seduce some of the listeners to go indeed sort of down to the, the same path as I followed for this podcast. Really do. With the context and then by singing to us and clarifying what the different melodies are on Malik when he plays a flute, by clapping and the head banging, though we can't see it, but we can imagine it in the different poles that you can engage with the music. So it's, it's the best uh, guided tour that we could have to this material. I hope so. Thanks very much for that, Art, and hope to see you around soon in the festival and we could do something live. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure making this. So for the listeners, the podcast which is just below this video, we expect on the website to be published and listened anytime when you're jogging, when you're traveling, biking, as Art was suggesting. All the best. Thanks Keep so much. Keep in touch. See you soon. Take care.